Hey everyone, welcome back to another webinar. Hey! <laughs> and um, yeah, so today we're talking about space, more stuff about space. Space. Yeah. Those things are not comfortable, but they're really cool. Oh, you have the lights on and everything? Yep, I got the lights on. Oh, that's really cool. Well, uh, today we're going to be, amongst other things, we're going to be learning how to make something like this at home using nothing more than maybe like a leftover plastic bottle and some duct tape and some cardboard and stuff like that. Yes, you too can make your own space helmet and we encourage you to make one. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, to the slides? To the slides or do we have words from our sponsors? Words from our, well, always hair and books. Always um, hair and books. Yeah. At the, at the end of this webinar, uh, I'm going to have a slide up that has the web address, heronbooks.com, and a promo code that you can get 30% off of everything listed in their catalog. They're really amazing educational materials there. I know you're all stuck at home and you can't go to school and learn there and you're trying to learn from home. Well, we're going to help you do that. Yep. Okay. All right. Let me pull up your slides here. All right. <clears throat> this is something that Diego and I have done many times yes. all over the country and it never gets old. I never get tired of this. Welcome to the helmet build. Where have we built helmets? Uh, we've built helmets here in Oregon. We've built them in Southern California, in Florida, in New York, in Boston. Boston. Yeah. Gosh. It's been it's really fun super fun yeah all right well, okay let's... so so here's that's your son that's my son so, yeah yeah that's my son there he's helping the little guy with his helmet it's really good for this activity if you have a helper so get mom or dad to help you out if you can and there's a lot of parts you can do by yourself but there's some parts depending on your age and your skill level um how what are what ages do we have today i just to get an idea of where where we're at with ages and where okay, you're good. from all right, everyone, yeah, just if you type your age in to the Q&A box real quick, I'll read them off, and that'll help us figure out what's what, what's the, the best way to approach this with you. Um, what do we got here? Yeah. 11. Oh, Ethan's, Ethan's from, the, from Delphi Academy in Florida. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. All right. <laughs> Good, and Chris says that he still has his helmet. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, so awesome. we've got 11, 16, 7, 10, 7, almost 8. All right. Yeah, and if Good. you've made a helmet before, make another one, because every time I build one, I find out new ways to do things. I come up with a new way to work the cardboard and all that. So, so NASA wants people. If you have dreams of working at NASA or working in the space industry, ideally you've made more than one space helmet. <laughs> yeah. Imagine going in for your job interview and they ask, so what makes you qualified to work at NASA? Like, well, I mean, not to brag, but <laughs> I brought my own helmet. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> I'll be here at eight on Monday. I'll see you then. You're hired. Yeah. <laughs> I made this when I was 11. Bam! Uh, okay, good. So, um, we got between like seven and 16. So welcome to everyone. We're gonna to try to make this accessible to all of you. Excellent. All right. All right. Oh, and we've got Mina from Delphi Academy of Campbell. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we've definitely been to Delphi Academy of Campbell. Yeah, hi Mina. Okay, so Diego, what would happen if an astronaut took off her helmet? Oh, bad things. Okay. <laughs> The helmet is one of the most crucial pieces of equipment that an astronaut has. Crucial means super important. Yes, super important. If you don't have compression on, if we don't have compression on our skin, it, 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 will, it would inflate the gas bubbles. Um, the gas inside our blood will expand. Anytime there's a lower pressure, um, it expands. So if you've ever had a chip bag and you see it filled and it's like about to bust, um, chances are that it was filled at a different pressure and then when it got to your pressure it expanded even more so they try to fill them at a lower pressure so that way they have room for expanding oh that's cool yeah I um, grew up in an area that 
if you're a grocery clerk in that area, the chip bags all exploded a lot. We were at 8,000 feet in Southern Colorado in a little town called Alamosa. So it's 8,000 feet. And so when that chip bag gets to a lot of destinations, <laughs> it's already busted because- it, Oh no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the chips. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have some very helpful people in our um, Q&A box letting us know that the slides were being a little bit funny. Okay. So let me, all right, at this slide right now, what should be appearing are the words, what would happen if an astronaut took off her helmet? Um, if you could real quick write into the Q&A box, can you see that or does it look like just black boxes or, or like something weird? I'm going to give a second. Give a thumbs up. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to give a second for people to, to write in with that. Yeah, so okay. with, with the helmet, um, if an astronaut were to take off her helmet, you would have just, it, it would be chaotic. You have about a couple minutes to live, um, and it would give a person serious damage. Uh, that's, it's pretty bad. Um, the, their eyes would bulge. Everything would just kind of. Well, that's fun. Yeah. So what you're saying it's a, it's a real it's really good that we have great space helmets yes, to wear yes. in space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, looks like there's definitely something funny happening with our slides. Um, thank you for everyone writing in what you see, black boxes and stuff like that. Right now you should be seeing the word demonstration. I hope that that comes through clearly. I'll give you everyone a second yeah, to uh, I'll get my demonstration ready for that. I have a UV light. So this is just kind of a standard UV light that you can get at a um, a, a Halloween shop, and I have these goggles here. So okay. demonstration is what I see. Okay, good. Good. Looks like we're all right. Okay. So it, it looks like some of you can see this and some of you can't. So it's a good thing that a lot of what we're doing today is hands-on stuff that we have here with us on the table. Uh, let me close this real quick. All right. Okay. What's this? This is um, a UV lamp. So here's a UV lamp. UV, uh, ultraviolet. Ultra. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a shade of light that usually humans can't see. It's like blue and then violet, purple, and then the UV. light keeps going more violet. It goes super ultraviolet and goes out of the range of what we're able to see. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, there's three types of UV light. There's A, B, and C. <laughs> and uh, UV A and B aren't too bad for people, but UV C is what, what people suffer from. So these demonstration goggles are made of something. They are made of polycarbonate. So uh, masks at NASA are, the, the face shield is made out of polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is great for blocking out UV. And so, um, Tape to these, do you guys see what's, can you guys see what's on his glasses? Tape to these are some um, beads that are UV beads. And so if there was ultraviolet in this classroom right now, you, they would be turning different colors and they're not. Okay. But we have a UV light to simulate being outside. So I'm going to shine these. <laughs> I'm going to turn this light on. And maybe I will hold, have it right <laughs> on my eyes. <laughs> so right away. Uh, there we go. Yeah. And we'll, we'll keep them like this. And so as this, as these glasses get really close, the, there, some of the UV light is taped on the outside. Some, or some of the beads are taped on the outside. James, can you point to the ones on the outside? Yes. Good. These ones are taped to the outside. And um, I can see it here. They're starting to glow like a purple yeah, the color, color, and I, I like hope we can this. see that on the broadcast. Yeah, I'm sure they can. And so you have the you have the UV beads on the outside and the inside. And if you look at the UV on the inside, there are hardly any color to them at all. Yeah. What and if go. here? Go ahead. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're 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 staying that color. So here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have that color there. Um, I'll put the UV lamp in front of here. And if you look at it like this, you can see the purple ones. Um, if you can point to the purple ones. So these ones have turned very purpley. Very let me, purpley. Let me see if I can, well, extreme close up. Yeah, okay, good. It's blurry, but you can see that they're purple. They have absorbed that ultraviolet light, which can be harmful to people. Not, not this one, but types of ultraviolet light uh -huh. can be harmful to people. And they, so that's showing that on the outside of those glasses, it's definitely there. All right. So 
it's safer on the inside of the glasses. Yeah, yeah. And that's where an astronaut needs to keep his eyes on the inside of the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> basics. <laughs> basics of space helmet. All right. right. You want to be on this side <laughs> of the polycarbonate, okay? It's called polycarbonate. Everybody repeat after me. Poly polycarbonate. Carbonate. You'll find this stuff. Fancy in, word for that kind of plastic. Yeah, this kind of plastic. It blocks out UV. Great, great properties about it. It's really strong. Um, but this is the stuff that's made in all the space helmets. You know, I, I know I'm supposed to keep my eyes on this side of my glasses. <laughs> Maybe I am qualified <laughs> to be an astronaut. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay cool. So that was a real quick demo. Um, what else we got next? All right. I'm going to real quick try to just reload that slideshow and see if it fixes okay. some there of the... Go. Good some idea. of the funny stuff that we were running into. Yeah. Okay, good. And the first helmet I'm going to be show you, showing you guys is the Apollo uh, space helmet. So this is Apollo space yeah. helmet. Okay, good. So uh, question and answer time. There is a slide up on the screen that says real space helmets, and it's got a picture of a real space helmet. And I would love to know if you guys can see that. Lorna says it's fixed. Okay, yay, good. Yay, yay. No black boxes. Everyone can see it now. Yay! We fixed it. This happens all the time in space exploration. Something's going along and everything's fine, and then it's not. And you need to use your mind. You need to use your mental skills and your creativity to solve it. And... Um, uh, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, yeah. <laughs> Diego, I know that one of your favorite movies, definitely one of my favorite movies, is Apollo 13. Uh -huh. It was made in the 1990s, and it's the movie showing the story of the Apollo 13 mission, where they were flying to the moon, and one of their oxygen tanks exploded. And if you think that's bad, you're absolutely right. It's bad. And they were able to use, uh, they were able to, to use their knowledge and their creativity yeah, yeah. To get enough stuff fixed that they were able to come home safely. Yeah, there's a famous scene where Houston, they're on ground control. They grab a bunch of parts that they knew that they had available to them, and the engineers got together and figured out how to make an oxygen scrubber, or sorry, a carbon dioxide scrubber. Yeah. And so a carbon dioxide scrubber takes out bad gases, carbon dioxide, out of the air, and so that way the, the astronauts just have clean air to breathe. Yeah. They had, it was... I think it was a round hole <laughs> that a square thing had to fit into. Uh -huh. And we all know from preschool that like the square doesn't fit in the round hole. But <laughs> these NASA engineers had to make the square fit in the round hole. They used a lot of duct tape <laughs> and a few other things. And we like, can make space helmets <laughs> with this too. That's right. They had to unlearn everything that they learned in kin in like kindergarten and preschool. All right. <clears throat> Let's Rad. see. Anya says she's late. Has she missed anything? No, the, 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 mo the most that you've missed was us having trouble with our slideshow, which we fixed. You missed he some good jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you missed the joke. Uh, here's some more <laughs> space helmets. These look so cool. Yes, yes, this is awesome. Um, the gold shielding. So the gold shielding on space helmets is a NASA spinoff. And so NASA spinoffs are um, technology, um, special techniques that some of the people that work for NASA develop, and then we have application in in the regular world. So this gold coating is a NASA spin-off. Yeah. So that gold coating protects. It, it's like a super strong, uh, like pair of sunglasses, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna read this off, and then James is gonna break it down for what it means. Um, Laser, and you'll break down the words for us and help us understand this. Laser gold is a proprietary process for electrochemically deposited gold. Okay, good. So what that means is it has the word laser in it. So that means it's cool. Um, <laughs> proprietary means it's their information. They developed it themselves and it doesn't belong to anyone else. And then a bunch of other big words that mean fancy science stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they used chemistry. They used the, the science chemistry, of, yeah. the science of um, working with chemicals uh, to deposit this gold. Laser gold reflectance is an astounding 99.4%. Okay, so most light is not going to go through it. Almost all the light is going to bounce off, which is why you can... <laughs> I'm, I'm pointing to my screen. You can't see where I'm pointing. Oh, yeah, we there we see. go. That, that middle one there that my mouse is at. You can see it's 
basically a mirror. Everything bounces off of it except for a tiny little fraction of light so that the astronaut can see things and not have his eyeballs burned out by the sunshine. So my question is, do astronauts need sunscreen? Let's see an answer to that. Uh, oh. <laughs> do astronauts I've, I've, need sunscreen? I actually don't know that. <laughs> okay, people, do astronauts, need, do astronauts need sunscreen? You and I are gonna learn about this together right now. Yeah. Uh, Shanna says, yes. Lorna says, no. Uh, Ethan says no. Hartley says maybe. Hartley, <laughs> you're a man after my own heart. That, that, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, the answer is no. Um, okay. The answer is no. Their suits are made so well. Oh. Uh, they have multiple layers of um, shielding. And they, um, they also have the polycarbonate uh, lens that protects them from UVC. UVC is uh, that dangerous light that can really bad do, light bad light does a lot of damage poison but light. the polycarbonate um, that we demonstrated with the glasses uh it protects so well that they're they don't have to have sunscreen that's so cool so it's yeah. like when i go to the beach and i'm wearing like a hoodie and a baseball cap and and like long pants and jeans and uh, wearing a blanket over top so i don't get any sunshine on me uh -huh. i don't need sunscreen because the sun's not hitting me uh-huh Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's still going through your clothes a bit, but um, not as bad. You know, with you, when you have that covering, you have, you know, 99% okay. protection. Ooh, really cool question from AG here. Uh -huh. Aren't the astronauts hot in their suits? Yeah, how do they handle yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So, liquid-cooled underwear. <laughs> liquid-cooled underwear. So, they have little tubing that goes all over them. And so, it's, a, it's basically long underwear that they put on underneath. And then... Um, there's these little tubes and then there's water being pumped through there constantly. So mm -hmm. it keeps them at just the right temperature with, with sensors and stuff. So it'll, it'll protect them. That's super cool. So there's like a really advanced air conditioning and, and heating system in the spacesuits to keep them from frying up when they're in the sunshine and to keep them from freezing when they're not in the sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And if anybody's looking for a science project, um, you know, when school opens up, one of the coolest things, I talked to some astronauts this uh, in February at, at the SEED conference in Houston, which is a space educators exploration conference. Sorry, let's just rewind just for a second. So you were just talking to some astronauts. Yeah. Just like, yeah, oh, yeah. hey, astronaut. <laughs> And they were like, hi, Diego. Yes, yes. Space Center Houston. This guy. Um, works with our school with Delphian. We work with them. Um, <laughs> but they make awesome education available for educators throughout the United States. So, That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of connections here at Delphian. And so we're uh, just the other day, I had a middle school student talk to an astronaut trainer, Aaron Andrews, about <laughs> his space fire extinguisher. <laughs> and he got an email response from her. Um, so that, that was really cool. That's was, so he, cool. He was so excited. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oliver asked, uh, don't really good and expensive sunglasses have that gold coating? Yeah. And that's exactly, so NASA. We, do, we could do a whole section on space spinoffs. We could do a whole, you know what? That's happening <laughs> next week. We're going to be talking about technology that exists now. Space Because it was developed for space exploration stuff. Thank you for helping us decide <laughs> yeah. that new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, so I was saying all that, yes. talking to these astronauts. Here's what's really needed um, by NASA. It's a problem they, they haven't figured out. I love finding out things that they need. I, need, I love finding out where NASA needs help. Um, when astronauts go for these spacewalks outside their, uh, outside their spaceship, they don't have food inside their helmet. Um, a lot, and also, too, they have really uh, kind of minimal water. Um, things can go wrong. Uh, mm. It went wrong with Chris Hadfield. He, there's a famous uh, YouTube video, and he has a big giant tear in one of his eyes, and it, it he couldn't see. He was outside mm. the space station, and he couldn't see. He lost his vision because um, water had developed, and um, it was uh, mixing with the with a disinfectant spray that they had sprayed on. Oh, uh, so it, inside it started visor, to sting his eyes. It sting and he couldn't even open his eyes. Okay, we're, we're gonna re rewind for just a <laughs> second. When you have, when you cry or when your eyes water, let's say you get something in your eye and your eye starts watering. On Earth where there's, you know, gravity like this, uh, what happens to, the, to your tears, right? They, they come and they go down your face. 
but that's because of gravity. So what if there's no gravity pulling them down? They would just kind of float in front of you. They would just stick right there. Yeah, yeah. And when that's what... Oh, no. And so when astronauts cry, it just pulls up like that because <laughs> of the, the stickiness of water. Water just likes to stick to surfaces. And he was... It, uh, Chris Hadfield was in his... Um, in his, his suit and he was trying to move his head. He had no way to get rid of that water. Interesting. NASA would love to have a little robot that could be deployed and do maintenance on the astronaut's face. But right now, um, even though there's, uh, there's robots that are that sophisticated, um, they need to be very trustworthy. They need to have like no chances of error or at least very, very, very little. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> maybe one of you could be the person that develops the little machine that goes in an astronaut's space helmet that when the astronaut starts to have their eyes water, this thing just comes in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. We um, can put one in one of our helmets. You, you know what? <laughs> Definitely. Put, make your helmet, put one in there. We have people asking like, all right, so are we going to start making helmets? Yeah. All right, let us go really quick through the rest of the stuff. And we're going to start making helmets. We're not going to make the whole helmet today, but we're going to show you how to get started and some ideas on where to go. Because usually when he, he and I have made helmets, we'll spend over an hour on it. Um, so that's more time than we have in this webinar right now, but we want to get you launched yeah. and able to create something amazing on your own. So when you click this off, you'll be able to, to build it. So yeah, on, on to this next one. Um, Super shiny. I think we already covered Good. that. I had some notes here on EVA, okay. so that was great. There's another kind of space helmet. Oh yeah, so this is an amazing helmet. This is 3D printed. So the helmet itself is 3D printed by SpaceX. Um, SpaceX is advancing some technology on 3D printing. Even their, <clears throat> their, engine, their engines are printed in in-house, um, wow. just amazing things. Here's some notes about it. They have 3D uh, printed spacesuit helmet, touchscreen compatible gloves, flame resistant outer layer, hearing protection during ascent and re-entry, single connection point between the suit and vehicle, meaning it's right by the knee and basically the, the astronaut plugs in his lifelines, his water, his cooling system, his comms. Oh, let me just plug my <laughs> knee into my spaceship real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so these guys drive. That's um, cool. Yeah, so the outside layer is uh, a material called Nomex and Kevlar. So Nomex and Kevlar, it's fire. So it's super strong. Super strong, fire, it stops fires, all kinds of stuff. Take a look at this photo. The whole thing goes whoosh. <laughs> the whole thing lifts up. And look, his eyeballs are on the inside of the glasses. Yeah, he's doing it right. That's how you know he's a good astronaut. His eyeballs aren't on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so awesome. And the, the helmet is made for a decompression event. So this thing fully seals. If um, they were to lose pressure inside their cabin, uh, the astronauts can still maintain life. Yep. Hey, Hartley says you could just figure out a way to put gravity in the helmet. There's an idea. <laughs> I didn't now, even think of that. That's the Now, how do you watch. do that? How do you create gravity to yeah. pull stuff down from inside the helmet? Hartley, I really hope that you work on that problem and that I am watching you receive like a big prize for science accomplishments. Yeah, that would be really something cool. something that spins or something. Uh, oh, would... Vila asked, why are their helmets open? Okay, so they're in their spacecraft there. They're not out in the vacuum of space. Um, and, and this picture was actually taken on the ground in one that, when they're just like testing and practicing. Yeah, we could even show them our space capsule because we have the exact mock-up if you want to pull that up. <laughs> we have. Uh, well, yeah. um, I, I think we're going to okay, yeah. plunge forward and get into, the, um, get, get into the helmet build itself. But don't worry, they're not in danger right there. And the helmets are made to go up and down. Yes. All right. So... Let me pop out a screen share for a second and the, go ahead and show us what we start with. Well, I, let's walk, the, the slides walk us through. So, oh, yeah, yeah. let's just okay, go good. the slides. Um, Here we go, helmets you can build. Yep, helmets you can build. So if you there we go. on this, yep. Yeah, this That's cardboard. Yeah, it looks just like cardboard. If you're looking at this at home, like, like you see the glue coming off of it. It looks mm -hmm. kind of like, what is that? Not very impressive. It's kind of like, really? That's all I'm going to be able to build. But that is the start that's of something. The start. That's the start of something great. Mm -hmm. And you do it with cardboard strips like this. 
These cardboard strips can be uh, broken down so you can take them on the edge of a table and you, you get them nice and bendy. So you run them on the edge of your table like that. Um, you can have an adult help you cut these um, or if you have a good pair of scissors, you might be able to cut your strips to get some old cardboard. Oh, look, it's bendy yeah, now. Yeah, it's bendy. Okay, it's good. Bendy. Bam, you start making it. You start measuring out your helmet. Right, there you go. You start measuring out your helmet. You start cutting things. Um, but first, we need some inspiration. So I wanted to All show right, you so, some other. So, so, so you want to see some uh, really cool helmets? Yeah. How Whoa! about that helmet? Oh, that's you so cool. You can make that. You can make that. Now that one takes some measuring. That one takes some figuring. But if you got some time at home, this is a great activity to do. Um, you'll probably need a hot glue gun. Um, you can also just do it with duct tape. Um, we've made a lot of helmets duct with tape. just duct tape. Take a look at this one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now the visor on this one, um, you can use it, you can get it from a two liter bottle. You could also get that visor from uh, a plastic cup and just kind of op open it up and then glue it on the inside. There's so many things you can do, but you'll notice that there's symmetry and symmetry is something when it's the same on one side as it as it is on the other. Yes, that's a great picture of it, symmetry. It's like if you put a mirror right in the middle, it, this side looks the same as this side. Right, so yeah. you're measuring pieces that have symmetry. Yeah. Look at this one. Wow, that's really cool. This is cardboard. Cardboard and a plastic bowl. Wow. On the inside, you'll see lights in there. Um, so they, they, went, they went the extra step and put some LEDs. And so uh, astronauts have cameras a lot of times on all the time when they're outside their space station because NASA wants to see what they're working on. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that they tighten the bolt right, that they put the that they that they're seeing anything that's happening. Yep. Because just like Chris Hadfield, when he was unable to see having that camera there, um, that gave him the ability to walk him back to. Uh, yeah, they're like, okay, reach yeah. out <laughs> three inches forward. Yeah. Good and grab that handle. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they can they can help. Wow, out. look at that one. This one, yeah, this one is really cool. That looks like a helmet from a video game. Yeah, that's so cool. So the the point of showing you these slides, <laughs> Shana, Shana says it's like a baby monitor for adults. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly correct. Uh oh, the astronaut's crying again. Someone go bring him some food. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, but it, it takes that kind of teamwork. There for for every astronaut that's in space, there's hundreds or thousands of people on the ground supporting them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. All the people that it takes to get them up there, um, they <laughs> represent. <Baby> monitor. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good. Uh, so, so so some really cool examples there. Yeah. So you can use paper. You'll see the cables on this is just. Uh, 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 bags, just brown bags. Brown and bags, just like up, twist it up into and they, a, and wow. to turn into wires. So um, if you have old junk, you just find out the junk that you have in your house. I would love to see your really cool. So that's just cardboard and paper bags. Yep. That is so cool. Yep. All right, you want me to go to the next thing? Really yeah, quick? yeah. So um, what is engineering? What is engineering? What is engineering? This is a great definition, very simple. Engineering is a branch of science and technology dealing with designing and building things. If you like designing and building things, chances are you'll love engineering. Yeah, okay, so who has ever made something out of Legos? You take some Lego bricks and you just build something new that's never been created before. I think we've all done that. Congratulations. You were a Lego engineer, you were designing and building things. And if you yeah. do that a lot and get a lot of experience on it, you can do that for a living. Yep. Yeah. So we challenge you to engineer your space helmet. Um, oh, the next slide, we have a little bit more on engineering. Um, ah. Now, engineering is a complicated process, but this one is, I like to break it down for people. The engineering, it, it's essentially these three parts. You design something. I want to build a spaceship out of Legos. Yep. And so you start designing it, you get that done, you cut it, and then you build it. Right. Design, cut, build. Those, those things, that's, that's pretty much the engineering process. Now, it can get much more complicated than that. There's a lot of other parts to it. But um, designing, um, even if, it's, if you take a sheet of paper or even a napkin and you start drawing how you want to make your space helmet, that's designing. There we go. Once you start cutting that cardboard, you're cutting, you're getting the materials from the raw you're separating them from the raw from the ref 
into the refined. There you go. Or, you know, just like assembling the Lego pieces. Obviously, you're not going to cut Legos because that's physically impossible. <laughs> Legos are the strongest <laughs> material in the known universe. Um, you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not technically true, but it sure feels like it when you step on one in the night. <laughs> um, so just like assembling the Legos. All right, I'm going to need, you know, a bunch of uh, brown pieces of this size. Okay, we're going to say, you know, yeah, yeah. put that together. Cool. And build. Okay. Cool. All right. So that was the end. Um, that was the end of the helmet. Um, well, we'll, now we'll show him. We'll share with what we got. Good design, cut, build. So he's already started cutting some of these strips out for them to be really useful um, to yeah. us. Oh, what you got there? So this is kind of like the second stage. Um, I usually start a helmet out with the ring on the bottom and the ring on top. Usually the ring on bottom, you want it to be plenty big, so that way it can go over your head. Hmm. And then the top is a little smaller, so it kind of crowns your head, right? And you measure it out. So we're to the start of a helmet. <laughs> so not very impressive yet, but combined with cool colors of duct tape. <laughs> so we got our cool colors of duct tape. Um, you can end up having really cool helmets. So um, anything that you have, yeah, so he's starting, he's already starting. He's going to show some little techniques on how to put those together. Um, you say technique. I'm just kind of making this up. But like he said, that first step is just getting a ring on top and a ring on bottom. And you saw me messing around with this earlier. I know that this is a little tight on the top of my head. So I think that this is going to rest above my head instead of on like instead of around here, it'll be up here sitting on top, like a baseball cap kind of. And then here's your helmet here. So I'm gonna show you kind of, so I know this looks like a really cool helmet. It is. I'm gonna show you the inside. You'll see some of the cardboard in there. There's old cereal boxes in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, uh, some, I think that's Chinese noodles. I think the other one's probably Japanese noodles. <laughs> Yeah, so you got cardboard on the inside, but you can add old electronic parts like this one's a little controller from a uh, from an old video game machine and then it's like an are, Xbox yeah, controller right there. These, That's cool. These are uh, LED lights that were just glued on with hot glue and then it's uh, covered in duct tape and that's basically what it is. We all, And then we also printed up a NASA a uh, NASA, uh, they call it the NASA meatball. Because <laughs> it looks like a meatball. Yeah, so it's it's the NASA meatball. You print one of those up if you have a printer or you draw it or try to redraw it and then you can cover that in clear tape and you got yourself a nice helmet. You want to show your helmet? Your helmet's a little different, that one on the side. This is my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> His has a little bit of different geometry. I've seen these. Yeah, this one's a, a little bit thinner and, and that works well for me. I have a smaller head, I think. We've got white duct tape and we've got um, silver duct tape. Oh, and the tops are green, so you can, it looks like oh, it's see-through. Is... <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> it's green, that is it's so green cool. on our end, but it's It, it matches our green screen back there, and um, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, and then this is just like a bit of plastic. Yeah, that which... was from a cup. That was yeah. from a cup? Okay, so yeah. it's just a plastic cup that you cut and kind of unfolded. We got our neat ball right there. And then on the inside is, you can see, it looks a little messier in there and that's okay. It, it doesn't need to look super pretty on the inside, but you can see we've taken, there we go. We've got extra bits of duct tape in there, uh, kind of holding it together, keeping it strong. Uh, our engineers that are watching today are uh, continuing to figure out how to solve the problem of tears in a spacesuit. Oh, cool. Awesome. Alette is saying for the tears, you could create a suction that pulls when it senses something more in the helmet. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, if, if it can't be pulled down by gravity, you can suck it out with, with the air. If you like problems, you probably have a great career in engineering ahead of you. Wow. Because a lot of creative ideas up there. Right. So um, we can end off on that, and we have another activity um, that you can do later on today. <laughs> yeah, so um, the, oh. yeah, good.
basically with this space helmet, go ahead and pull out that frame again. Oh, it's this is really hard to talk to. Yeah. And, and I'm afraid that you guys can't, can't hear me. So uh, we're not gonna sit here and build a helmet with you. This is something, go ahead and take the time to do it at home and take the time to try a few different designs. You know, um, if it doesn't feel right, go ahead, just start over and just do it again, make another one. Um, the spacesuits that they wear in space, those are not the first ones they've made. Those are probably like the one millionth version. <laughs> um, so you start with that basic frame. And if, if I could see that again real sure, quick, sure. and some of those extra cardboard strips that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then once you've got your frame here, just start adding these around the outside where, where you need to. You can bend them and fold them. They can be kind of coming over the top in a bit of a dome like that over top. Go ahead and try a few things. It's definitely gonna be trial and error. You're gonna try stuff, it's not gonna work, and you're gonna try something else. And also you have different materials. Too. You have all kinds of different materials. You can use old cereal boxes. There's a, if you have an old pair of goggles, you can even tape those in place. Oh yeah, like, like swimming goggles or ski goggles or something like that. That would be a really cool addition to it. Yeah. Okay, good. Cool. So the other awesome activity is a Mars habitat. Yeah, good. We've got seven or eight minutes left. So <laughs> we're going to go really quick through this. So again, just giving you the basics to start so that you can do this at home. Yeah. And I'm a Mars Maven education ambassador. Wow. What does that mean? So Maven was the satellite that was launched to figure out what happened to the water on Mars. Okay. And it went around Mars a bunch of times and was taking measurements to see water evaporation, <laughs> water Ooh, wow. as it was leaving the surface of Mars. Okay. And they're, um, they're, they're still trying to figure out what happened to all the water on Mars. There's evidence that there was once a lot of water on Mars. Maybe someone was really thirsty. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, this is a Mars habitat component. So if you were to put a colony on Mars, how would you build it? And that's what we're going to get into. We won't show the video as the next slide, so we'll just skip over that. Okie doke. This here is a picture. This is um, in America? Yeah, this is in Hawaii. Oh, uh, this is Hawaii. Yeah, one of my friends, uh, Andre Stewart, he spent six weeks um, on one of the islands in Hawaii. Wow. And he had to, every time he stepped out of his habitat, he had to wear a Mars spacesuit. So to me, this guy is one of the closest things to, be a, to being a Mars astronaut mars uh what would you call him a martian <laughs> a marstronaut a marstronaut yeah. yeah okay cool so the, you can see there's stuff that they've built here they pretended that this island um in hawaii was mars and they just you know they were kind of playing pretend there uh in a really scientific and specific way in <laughs> yeah. order to test all this stuff yeah if it works it on test. hawaii if it doesn't work on hawaii it's yeah, definitely problems, not yeah. going to work and on they Mars. did find some things what, one of the things that they found out going out every day is that they would build up a lot of bacteria in the suits and they needed to actually up the rigor on how well they clean the suits oh, every day. the suits because got dirty one of the persons that got an infection they had a small cut Ooh. and then um Ooh. the suit wasn't clean and they they got an infection and um, they almost had to stop the mission because they would have had to call someone in to. You get can't medical. have that happen on Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't do that on Mars. Right. All right. Let's see what we got here. We're gonna skip this video. Okay. Cool. Water purification and food hydrator. Okay. So <laughs> it takes dirty water and it makes it clean water, so you can drink it without getting sick. And food hydrator. So to hydrate means to add water to. One cool thing that they do with space food is they take all the water out of it and they, or most of the water out and they launch it up. And, um, and then the astronauts just add water to the food and the food kind of becomes normal food again and then they can eat it. It sounds kind of gross, but they have many, many, many years working on how to make space food that's actually tasty because if it doesn't taste good, the astronauts, the astronauts don't want to eat it. And if they're hungry, they're cranky, and you don't want to be cranky in space. No, that's right. That's, that's right. right. So they got all these parts that do all kinds of wild things for their food. So you can make, um, so one of the activities that we've done with students is we teach them about these components, and then they make models with cardboard. 
And yeah. when you start making all these components, you can put them together with a big class and you basically have a Mars habitat. It's super fun. You can and make a Mars colony. You can make a Mars colony. So if you have extra time on your hands and you're getting bored, which let's face it, <laughs> we do and we are. Yeah. So a lot of people have some extra time on, on their hands at home. Um, you can start making these Mars uh, components. So if parents are listening in, big activity, Mars components, because once you have to start researching and finding out more of it, more about these, you, you want to know, well, what are the parts to a water purification and food hydration system? <laughs> right, like what, what, what are all those things <laughs> happening there? What are all What's these the tubes, tubes and yeah. why, why is everything circular? It's not there's magic. There's a lot of circles in yeah. there. It's not magic, there's, yeah. there's reasons for all these things. Uh, Evelyn said, isn't space food gross? Uh, it could be, and it used to be, but again, like, if you're going to go somewhere and be on a special mission, you need to eat, you need to have energy and you need to be in a good mood. You can't be upset. You can't be cranky. This is too dangerous and important. My, so. my friend who was on the, the <clears throat> my friend who was on the Mar Mars uh, mission in fake Hawaii, Mars. Yeah, yeah, fake Mars in Hawaii, he said that he ate better um, when he was on that than when he was not because oh, wow. the food was just pre pre-made um it was a balanced diet so he said he eats actually kind of worse food when he's <laughs> not on those types of missions than when he's on those well, missions. i don't think you're eating taco bell in space <laughs> but again it's like w there's people who have dedicated their entire careers to figuring out how to make delicious healthy nutritious food that is easy to transport to space it doesn't spoil it doesn't go bad but when the astronauts eat it, it tastes good and it's enjoyable to eat because you just, you can't be in a bad mood in space. You can't. Yeah. You need the energy to carry on your mission. Yeah. Um, let's go to the next component. Solar panels. Solar panels. You need solar panels for energy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. one of the components is solar panels. They're, they're going to be using a lot of those. They're continuing to use those. Um, Solar panels on Mars and on Earth are just amazing things to work with. So and if you every ever work, year they get better and better. Yeah, yeah. If you get a chance to work with any of them, learn about them. If you have them on your house, ask your parents about them. Um, but find out more about solar panels. You can make a model, model solar panels. Awesome. The next one. Oh, a demo? nuclear battery. You need yeah. a battery. You, you need something. Uh, yeah, so my phone has a battery but it's gonna run out, you know, if I don't charge it up, it runs out in a day or two. I am going to go grab another glass. Okay, you quick. do that. It, you keep the show running Good. because I have a demo that actually relates to this. I have a demo that actually relates to this nuclear battery. Perfect. And we're okay. gonna see it right here. Let, let's do it. Um, while you're grabbing that, I'm gonna talk about space ice cream because I'm getting a lot of questions about space ice cream. When I get, when I go, um, to like a museum and they have astronaut ice cream. I, we might have all had or tried astronaut ice cream and it's the freeze dried stuff. It's, it's dry, um, it breaks apart really easily and it's kind of like a ice cream bread, kind of like a really stale bread and you break it apart and there's crumbs everywhere. They actually don't eat that in space. Um, it's really cool and it's a lot of fun to eat and it feels weird but you would not want something like that in space because um, it's too crumbly. You don't want crumbs in space. You can't have that because there's no gravity and the crumbs float around and then they get into the instruments and they get into your keyboards and they get into the switches and stuff like that. And it could actually cause problems. So they really tried not to have stuff with crumbs in space. They don't use tortilla chips up there. They use tortillas. <laughs> uh, you know, bread, they, they, they don't like to send bread up there because bread can turn into crumbs, but tortillas, like for tacos and burritos, those are really popular up there because uh, they create much less uh, crumbs and, and spills and stuff like that. Oh, what is this? This is a, this is a thermocoupler. So, okay, right on the inside. I'm going to angle this down so sure. we can see it. Sure, right on the inside is a piece called a thermocoupler. Now a thermocoupler has some interesting properties, but you can attach it to um, a piece, two pieces of metal. So I got two pieces of metal. One is in ice water and the other one is in hot water. So I boiled this about 10 minutes ago. I kept it in a thermos, but I don't know how much heat it might've lost. 
Um, but what we're doing is I have hot and cold. And back to our nuclear battery, mm -hmm. a nuclear battery has a really hot core, but it has some cold components. So it has hot and cold. When you have hot and cold, you can use a thermocoupler to make energy. And so I'm gonna see if after, sometimes it takes a little bit to get it going. It's kind of moving there a little yeah. bit on its own. It might have to acclimate a little bit, but once- Acclimate means to get used to. There it goes. Look at that. There it goes. So, so you're creating energy just from water. Yeah. Hot that, and cold water, and it's making that thing spin. So if you have something really hot and really cold, you can generate electricity with it. Wow. That's the simplicity of a nuclear battery. So that slide wow. that we had earlier that has the nuclear battery that was put on uh -huh. uh, the Curiosity rover, that thing, the Curiosity rover was the first rover that didn't have a um, solar panel on it. So all the wow. other ones, they had solar panels on it. But with this simple process, you're able to generate electricity. Well, I, I can just barely <laughs> feel that breeze. Wow, that, that thing's really moving. Yeah, and it is, if you have hotter and hotter, um, if you have hotter and hotter water and cooler temperatures, then uh, it, it makes a lot of electricity. Yeah. Mars is really cold. Yeah, it is. So if we send up um, nuclear material up there, you have this hot source right on Mars. The battery then, is hot. The Martian atmosphere is cold. There you go. And this thing can run for- yeah, you've got magic. This thing can run for years. Many years. years. Yeah, many yeah, years. Yeah, it's going on. It's in its eighth, seventh or eighth year right now. Yeah. That's super Because cool. Mars further from the sun than Earth, it runs out of um, sunlight. So they don't have as much good sun sunlight. Yeah. So, Well, we are running out of time here. I hope that <laughs> yeah. you have learned some basics on how to start building your space helmet. Um, if, here, let me run to the very end of this slideshow. Oh, there's so much cool stuff. Uh, okay, good. Heronbooks.com. That's where you can go and get a bunch of really cool curriculum. Um, but I want to throw, I wonder if I can really quick, hang on a second. <laughs> James, you're habitually <laughs> running over the time limit. I, always, every <laughs> time. If you make a space helmet and you want to show us that space helmet, go ahead and send your space helmet to events at delphian.org. Take a yes. picture, email it to there. I would love to see some of the stuff that, that you guys make. And, uh, Great. Uh, one very excited person in here has been saying that we should make a space suit. Maybe we'll do that in, in, a, in a future week here. All right. I am going to sign off now. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I hope that you join us tomorrow morning, same time. We're going to be talking about stars. How do stars live? Oh, stars. How are stars born? How do they die? Why they're the most important single thing in the entire universe. Superstar. Superstar. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.